Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena. It's been a few days since I've made a video. That's the perk of not doing this for a living. You can be angry at me, and I don't care. <laughs> anyway, we're back here now with this rogue deck. I don't remember anything that's in it, so we'll just uh, wrap this up and start a new one, I'm guessing, in this video. Don't remember this being that deck. Oh, I, I, I remember. I remember what this was. This was the deck that I thought wasn't necessarily good, but it was fun. Yes, that's right. It's got a sprint and an oil and... A bunch of backstabs and some fan of knives, some spell damage. Okay, okay, it's coming back to me. Ah, uh, yes, I remember somebody pointing out to me that uh, the auto barbers are mechs, and I shouldn't forget them when I'm playing the Iron Sensei. That's the rogue rare that buffs your mechs a whole lot. Okay, it's all coming back to me now. Grevenus, the paladin, is the first opponent. Great as Spectre Knights are against paladins, keeping that in the opening hand is a little bit foolhardy. Oh, we get a Doomsayer and an Arcane Golem. Well, even against a Paladin, you don't want to play the Arcane Golem on turn 3, so this is a bit of an awkward start. With luck, I can maybe kill one thing with a Doomsayer. Auto Barber, I don't think is worth coining into, nor was it worth to coin the Dagger just to play the Barber. That's a bit risky. Ah, Spider. Well, balls. Because if I Doomsayer, the Spiders just pop out. That seems pointless. So I'm just going to backstab, dagger, and we'll kill off one of the spiders. The nice thing about being a rogue is I can kill off the other one next turn for free. All, all that matters is, that was my girlfriend sneezing, is whether or not I need to play the auto barber and hit something for two. Reach of Morgan. Well, all right. I actually could have coined into Fan of Knives, but I, I didn't really see the urgency to, um, what's his face, rush out a... Uh, a coin use there. Okay, so the Nullifier, unlike Ascension, is actually really awful against this Raging Organ. I can't kill it in any other way. I could Doomsayer, and I'm gonna try it. The problem with this plan is really obvious. He could put, play a True Silver Champion and then actually kill the Doomsayer, but if he doesn't have a True Silver Champion here or a Blessing of Kings, then that Doomsayer will kill off his Worgen and stop him from playing anything else, and I could be okay. Oh, he's got a Blessing of Kings. Well... Shucks a doodle do. Now I don't have any way of um, killing that because I don't have my assassinate here. So there's a 7-7 seven, seven I just can't deal with in any way whatsoever. This thing would just turn on Wind Fury for that. I mean, so would really anything I play. This is just terrible. I need Sap or Assassinate. I have neither. I could Fan of Knives hoping to fish for an Assassinate, but that would make it into an 8-6 with Wind Fury. Um, I'm just fucked. I, I don't think I can do anything this game. There's really nothing I could have done here. Um, yeah, I just didn't have an answer to Worgen and Blessing Kings. If I had kept Backstab like, for the Worgen, I could have used it. Maybe what I should have done... It, it, oh, great. Maybe what I should have done is um, not Backstabbed the Spider. What I could have done is I could have played Doomsayer, let, the, that, that, let that pop the Spider, and then, see if, and then use Fan of Knives later to um to kill it off so that was his plan that's why he let it get damaged because he was going to heal it now i have a seven a ten seven to deal with and still no assassinate i'm just going to concede there's no point in playing this game well that was pretty retarded um could have won though maybe if i had actually uh chosen the doomsayer to pop his spider then he wouldn't have played anything else on turn three so I would have gotten tempo. It would have been my turn three. I just would have had... Uh, I could have just played Phantom Knights, killed the spiders. I don't know. I mean, it's easy to second-guess yourself. The truth of the matter is, his strategy wasn't that great. Just put going all in on that worgen. I just happened not to have Sap or Assassinate. If I'd had either one of those, I would have been fine. So it was just bad luck, I think, that game. Iskala the Warrior? Oh, Assassinate. Taunting me. Assassinate. All right, well, Warrior's a bit of a tough matchup. So we'll see what we can do. I'm at two and two, which is annoying. It's a pretty ugly place to be. And uh, I do have a daily quest. I need four more games with Rogue or Warrior, so it'd be nice not to have to go into the ranked queue to finish that. But getting four wins in a row here would be a tall-ish order. Well, let's just do one step at a time. Huh? Let's see if we can get one game. So one question you have to ask yourself is, is it worth it to coin into an Auto Barber? And the answer is yes, because I got an Iron Sensei. If I hadn't gotten that, I would have just waited. 
Because by coining this out, I'm basically committing to, like, wasting both of their battle cries. But if there's a sensei out here, and as I've been conveniently reminded, this is a mech. God damn it! Oh my god of all the fucking things. Well, fuck. Fiery wax. Really should have thought about that. Alright, let's play the gnome, I guess. Better than making a dagger, and if I use this to use up the last tick of the war axe, then I'll be okay. Of course, you could have a cruel taskmaster here. Luckily not. Oh, he's gonna inner rage it. Well, that does get me up a card because I get my spare part and he loses the inner rage. But, yeah. Huh, eviscerate. I can't combo that out. I could play this and give it. Oh, what the time rewinder? That's terrible. I could do the. Nope, doesn't work. Okay, well, I'm just gonna make a dagger and pass the turn. Man, these openings are so frustrating. So, I've already used my coin, it got wasted to the fiery war axe. And now I'm facing some serious ass trouble. <sighs> Balls. Alright, well, let's play this and think. I could actually combo and eviscerate, or I could play the Dread Corsair, but I might as well just eviscerate these dancing swords. Get a card. Oh my god. Well, that's a good, that's a good top deck. Even though it wastes the battle, the, the auto barber thing, I get to kill off that thing. I'm actually doing fine on cards. We're gonna get to drop an ogre ninja next turn, which is huge. Granted, it might hit the wrong enemy, but I think I'm okay. Sludge Belcher is an annoying creature, but it doesn't hit very hard. So let's do what we can here. Hopefully, the ogre ninja won't miss the target. And we'll be okay. Sky Golem, fuck me sideways. What is it today? He's just on a perfect curve. Alright, well, let's see if the Ogre Ninja maybe can do me a solid and take out that Golem. Nope, takes out the Sludge Belcher. Which is its own kind of good, I guess. Um. Shoot. This, this works out really awkwardly. If I play this guy... Ah, much as it sucks, I think I'm gonna have to do this. Um, wait, I screwed that up. I should have played this first, then this. Um, shit. No, but if I played this, no, no, I should have played the Dread Corsair, attacked, and then played the Perdition's Blade. Right. Well, since that didn't happen, let's just play the Silver Hand Knight and pass the turn. So I do get whapped down to eight if I don't get my. Antique heal, but I could just die. I could actually die right now. So he's going for broke, which makes perfect sense. Um, I'm going to be at three health. I have to have a taunt or life gain just to not die to the weapon. And then the sky golem is difficult to kill even if I do get rid of the weapon. Okay, well, let's do this. See what pops out. 5-4. Well, that's a bitch because that's really one of the better things he could have gotten. So what I have to do here is I can play this without combo, but then the squire doesn't quite kill that. Um, I could play this just to trigger combo. I think, do I need to save this ogre ninja? Hang on, I gotta play this guy at some point because that's the only thing I have that stops me from dying. So I could play him and just to do this. Yeah, even though I'm not getting the discount, that's okay. Shoot. Kill, hit. Now, if he gets past my Dread Corsair, I die, of course. I took too much damage in this game. But I could still win if I got that antique kill bot. Up to 11 health, I'd be fine. Wow, he's actually got a mortal strike. Mother fucking unbelievable. Well, that was a shitty way to come back. <sighs> so, a nice two win rogue run to end my really good streak with rogue. Well, let's see how many I went. Um, seven runs with rogue. No, I had six good ones. The seventh one was the bust. So my last class that I haven't really failed with yet is Mage. My In, in uh, seven runs, I've had nothing worse than six. Every other class has, now with Rogue, had at least one shitty run. Oh, so sad. And we get no gold for it either. Ugh. Well, it's a good thing I've been doing lots of dailies, so I'm above 13,500. I have been logging in to finish the daily quest, just haven't been making videos. Let's see if we get a nice legendary here to soothe the pain. No, nothing. Nothing in the old slightest. Ah, 
Man, those are two really dumb games, too. I don't think that Warlock or, or that Warrior or that Paladin did anything particularly impressive. Well, all right. Shaman it is. It's the one of those three that I have not done as much. Oh, Auctioneer. These are such mediocre cards. I'll just take the Auctioneer. Let's see what happens. See what we can do. Healing or the potential for a good three drop. All right, I'll take the Unbound guy. Ugh. Well, this works with the Auctioneer, but I don't think that's smart. We'll just take the tank. And the buff. Spiders are very annoying to deal with, so we'll take those. Ooh, Hex or the Axe. I think I think the Hex is more important for being able to take out anything. Power Mace is just a broken-ass card, so we'll take that. Flame Tongue is the only playable card there. All right, we'll take a Cult Master because I don't want any more threes right now. All right, we'll take Lava Burst. And let's see, a good two drop or this big dumb beast. I think we'll take the good two drop. I'm sort of only not, only playing the spiders right now. Here we'll take a Stormforged Axe. Gosh, I don't like this tall strider. I'll just, I'll just take the snapjaw, the big dumb beast. It's just fine. Card draw or the Tron. We'll take the Tron. I think it's more important. All right, Rockbiter for some nice removal, though it's sad to lose on a Yeti. Instead of a Yeti, I get junk. Ugh. Well, this thing is pretty crappy. It does have taunt, though. I'll go for this for the extra burn. Nice second hex here. Third hex? Hmm. No, I'd rather have a second rock biter than the third hex. This is nice for some bigger creatures. I'm getting, it's getting a bit late. I don't have any good uh, end game stuff. Second power mace. Power mace is just so damn good, I'm going to take it. Even though the Azurgic would have been great. we got to grab an ogre here, though, because I need some end game more than need more removal. All right, nice fatty there. Lightning Bolt over the Mediocre cards. Silence, of course, is terrific. Second Lightning Bolt over the Junk. Oh, this is bad. There's actually a lot of stuff here I don't want to have silenced. Anything that gets buffed by this, the Spiders, the Flame Tongue, the Tron. Pretty much everything I'd play before this, even something that got buffed by the Cleric, I don't want getting silenced. So I'll take a Demolisher, though. That's a shitty pick. Second Flame Tongue or the Storm Pike. Let's take another Flame Tongue. Hmm, Bloodlust for the finish. Nah, the Ogre's more reliable. Alright, wow. Well, the removal flowed fast and free. The Mech Warper, let's see, it can get me out in a Tron. It can help me get out a Demolisher, a Tank. That's, what, three I've counted? And itself can be buffed by the Power Mace. I'll take it over a Rockbiter. And we end up with an Epic. Wow, perfect. So, the Sea Giant or the Golem? Golem's more consistent. Sea Giant has some synergy with the spiders and my totems. And it's bigger, obviously, than the golem is. Hmm. I'm going to trust my gut here and just take the one that's more consistent. All right, this deck actually... I think if, if I do badly, it's my fault for misdrafting just because... There was so much removal, and that's really good. Just You can win a lot of games in the arena just by having tons of removal, killing everything your opponent plays and playing your own stuff. And if the opponent doesn't have as much removal as you do they'll lose. And you might wonder, well, if you're just going card for card, killing your opponent's stuff, how does that help you win? Well, the reason is that you get to choose. You get to use your removal to kill the important stuff, let them keep their crappy stuff, and then your good stuff kills their crappy stuff, and you win. Also, some removal, like the weapons, of course, uh, are inherently advantageous from a card advantage standpoint. Alright, this is tricky. So the Spellbreaker needs to go. Do I keep both of these weapons? Hmm. I'm gonna just keep one of them. Okay. Not the greatest opening hand, but it is gonna shut down a lot of possible starts. So I'm fine with it. Oh, an archer, everybody. Well then, that's an, that's an encouraging start. So do I coin into the, the axe? Nah, I think I'll just coin into the spider, use that to take down the elven archer. And then I'll play the axe on turn two. On turn three, I'm not going to care about overload. I'm just going to be making a totem on turn three anyway. So I might as well do this. This is a pretty weak opening hand, but uh, if I'm facing against someone who played Elven Archer turn one, Bright Hammer, more like not too Bright Hammer, am I right? Uh, then this should be okay. All right, so she didn't make a dagger. She's going for the pine size Gambit. Luckily for me, I do keep the correct axe. This could have been the Charging Infantry, the 1-4 with charge and taunt. 
Would have been better than a Nightblade, although I wouldn't have been able to play him on turn 3 anyway, so meh. So you're going to dagger down those spiders? Or play a 3-drop? So she goes for the Acolyte, which I think was a pretty sound move. Because it's going to give her two cards. <sighs> do I do this on my terms? I'm going to do this. Sucks to give her two cards, but at least I have a tick of the weapon and I get two spiders, so it's not like I lost cards. That was just an arcane and electro her that popped my spider and used up a weapon tick, which granted is pretty good. But it could be worse. Alright, she doesn't have anything on turn four, so she seems to be like me with not much to play. Which might mean she has some removal, things like Assassinate or something. Oh, she's gearing up for a Fan Knives. Well, if I find a Healing Totem, that could save my Spell Totem. If I get the 1-1 Totem, that would suck, because it would just die to Fan Knives. And the Taunt Totem is sort of in the middle. Okay, never mind. She's going to shiv that. I guess it's not Fan of Knives. So she's amassing a lot of cards, but I'm doing fine on cards as well. And uh, do I hit her in the face? No. The advantage of hitting her in the face is I could play Power Mace without wasting this axe, but I don't want to play Power Mace next turn. I want to play the Nightblade, so I think it would have been a mistake to waste that tick. I've got all these one ones out here with this, even with the one less damage, you know, it's compared to the power mace, it still would do me some good to have that axe. Turn five and she plays a three drop. Oh my god, oh man, the face. When there's all these one ones to kill, that's certainly encouraging. Really just by the, the play of this opponent alone, I should be able to win. If I lose, it would be it would be really tragic. Alright, so we're gonna Night Blade, which is its own kind of shitty card. I don't want to waste the damage, so I'll do this, this, and in the face. Note that I didn't want to use up my totem because I want the totem out so that I can be more likely to get the other better totems. I would prefer to use up these spiders first. Ember Cobra will die to my Nightblade or the Power Mace. Or a lightning bolt, or a rock biter, or hex. I mean, it's nice to everything. <laughs> so, do I play the ogre or not? Oh man, this is. That was a remarkable moment in my life when she actually had a. Like, she didn't go on the table and still chose to hit me in the face instead of killing a creature. Alright, let's see here. We can kill the cobra with this and this, and then we can use the night blade to kill that. I still want to get this ogre out here. So, first you kill the ghoul before it gets bigger. Then you kill Cobra. Get her in the face. That's the turn. So now that ogre is pretty solid. If she does assassinate it, then I'm in a little bit of a pickle because I took all those lightning bolts and rock biters and hexes instead of creatures, and now they're all in my hand. I don't think that's necessarily indicative of bad drafting. That that's just because she hasn't played anything that I needed to use spells to kill, and the draw is a little bad. That's practically like all my spells. So the fact that all my minions are in the deck is, you know, just a little bit of bad luck. This might have been an Azure Drake, although I have two power mazes, so it might not have been the one that I took over the Azure Drake. Behold, the one champion, not the most impressive card here. I could kill it with the ogre, but oh, still letting this totem live. Wow. Uh, but I think it's better to hex it, because then I get to keep the damage off of my ogre. Yep, I could have had an Azure Drake here, which would have been solid, but that's okay. So we'll make a totem. Hoping for a healing totem to heal up my Nightblade, but nope, it's not to be. We're actually threatening lethal now. Can I actually kill him that turn? Shoot. This would have been three damage. Wow, I could have killed him. Three. These are all three. This would have been 12 damage just with this stuff. So I, I actually could have just killed him that turn. And she uses Betrayal on the Ogre to kill a Totem and a 1-1. Well, shame on me for missing lethal. I 
just forgot to count how much damage I had. When it's three damage per card, it adds up sort of fast. Anyway. Oh, yeah, keep going for the face. The, the, the dagger them to death approach is uh, not my preferred strategy with Rogue. So, I should do it. My shield for Argus. Defender of Argus. Well, I gotta give her credit for knowing the Defender of Argus is a good card. So, we're gonna Power Mace and Rock Fighter and Lightning Bolt. Damn. All the stuff I should have done last turn. Alright, good game. Uh, certainly makes me feel a little bit better after that last game. And we're only 20 minutes into the video with two games and a new draft, so good. Let's see if we can do a few more things. Oh, do I really not have a Shaman Daily Quest? That's annoying. Let's see what we got here. Bombody boo 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 boo. Blink. The paladin. D Horus. Well, I was a rogue versus a paladin. Should have been in an advantageous matchup. Wasn't. Let's see if we can do better as a shaman. Got a pair of three drops. No coin, sadly. Got an ogre out here. Could have been a removal card. Could have been a crackle. Not that sad about it. Oh, there's the demolisher. So we're making a totem on turn two rather tragically, and then playing three drops. Here's hoping he passes turn one. Thank you kindly. This could have been a lost tall strider. I'm not that bothered about it. Hoping he makes a creature that I can use power mace on rather than playing a recruit. Shilly Minibot does not get power maced very effectively. So I could Shattered Sun Cleric, buff this to be a 1-3, pop the shield, then it heals up to be a 1-2, and the Shielded Minibot still kills this. Or I could play the Demolisher. Then the Demolisher, then the Shielded Minibot can kill this, but it might not be able to kill the Demolisher. Hmm. I just don't really trust my chances. We'll do that. Now, if he kills my totem, he hasn't really gotten ahead. And I've got three power to kill this thing. Give if he kills this, I still have my totem. Alright, he must have some plan here. Coin and something else. Hand of protection, maybe. Make that a 4-4 four, four with divine shield and more growing potential. Oh, thank goodness. It's not that. It's just making it a 4-4 four, four with the secrets. So, this is a bit of a... Actually, it's a bit of a problem because this could be noble sacrifice. So I have to go a little bit balls to the walls Dickens here to kill this thing. I think the proper way is um, I'm going to try to actually kill off the Shielded Minibot. Check for Redemption and for Avenge and for Noble Sacrifice all in one swoop. Yeah, looks like it's Avenge. Perfect. Which means now I get to do Power Mace and Rock Fighter. And kill us. You know what? That was a damn fine play. I think some people would have missed that as the right sequence of plays to make, and since I've been screwing up a whole lot lately, I'm going to give myself some goddamn credit for making the right play there. I think that was the only way to do it. Because if it was Noble Sacrifice, I still could have played Rock Fighter and the Power Mace to kill the questing. If it was Redemption, then it means the questing wouldn't have gotten redempted. And if I tried to attack the questing first... Well, if I tried to attack the questing first and it was Avenge, as it was, then I would have been okay, but... If it hadn't been Avenge, if it had been Noble Sacrifice, that would have been a total disaster. Alright, I'm gonna play the Demolisher, which might, which might seem a little bit weird. Why not wait until the weapon's gone before playing the Demolisher? The, honestly, the Demolisher is just not as good as the Spider Tank, so I'd rather the Spider Tank stay for later. Gorbashi Berserker is a bit of a problem. Oh man, well we'll just play the Ogre, it holds up relatively well against it, as long as he doesn't have any way of dealing himself damage. Gadgets and Auctioneer, I got a ton of one mana spells in the draft. Of course none of them are in the hand. I did use a Rock Biter, I still got Lightning Bolts and Rock Biters that I can use to trigger this guy. Even getting one card off of him, I'd be pretty happy. Two would be tremendous. Seven men are looking at Tank and Snapjaw as my play. Mm. Fighter 
tank, spider tank. We must collect uh, balls. All right, I gotta kill this thing before it becomes any more of a problem. But things are getting a little bit hairy. So first, we need to play the tank. Wait a minute, hang on. I can actually hex this now. Is that worth it? Is it worth it to hex that thing? Because, okay, what I could do is the following. I could um play the tank, hit this with my ogre, take six damage, kill it off. Um, and then this tank being a mech would get buffed and become a 5-6, which is pretty solid. Or... Oh, and then also I have four mana left to play the Snapjaw after that. Or I could hex this thing, kill it with the ogre, play the tank, kill this guy with the mace. I then I lose my hex, killing a Gurubashi. But I get more board presence now. If I take f um, five damage, I'm down to 14. Probably won't get burned out, but if he doesn't play anything later, that makes me wish I had a hex. God, if he had a big six drop, he would have just played it. I bet the hex is the right move. So we're gonna hex this. Kill it with the ogre. Play the tank. Kill this. I've got six, seven, and a five, six. Paladins have a tough time dealing with big creatures. I have enough health that I feel relatively safe. And I can play. Oh, the next turn's awkward. I can only play one of these cards. So I'd have to top deck something. Or else I'm just playing a card and a totem. I wonder. Just because of my life total, it's a little bit harrowing here. Oh, Blazing of Kings again. Ugh. So you can kill my tank and my ogre. Oh, he goes for broke. Hmm. A bold play. Well, he's going to regret that. Because I get to do this. Yes, both my creatures die, but they both give me cards. I wish I'd gotten a lightning bolt to finish that off with. Lava burst. One top deck too late. Do I go for the warper and the totem? Or the big numbies? Let's go for the warper and the totem. Alright, we have now... Um, potential to play this lava burst for a card. That would deal some pretty good damage. If he can't kill me off with, like, True Sliver and some burn or something, he's going to regret hitting me in the face with that spider tank. Seal of Light gets rid of my Cult Master. Stops me from getting more cards, at least from the Cult Master. This recruit is under control. Hammer of Wrath is fine. It gives him a card, but I don't care about him getting cards. What I'm concerned about is him building up a board presence and overwhelming me. As long as he doesn't do that, I'm fine. And he's continuing to go for the throat. Alrighty. Plays this instead of a recruit. I would have actually played the recruit here. But it's like an extra card. It would have been worth it for him, I think. Alright, let's give him a spare part. Play the dumb beast. And a heal, which is nice. Two hit points is good here. So it's a bit precarious, but I think I'm, I'm giving myself the edge here. As long as he doesn't play something gigantic, I should be okay. I've still got some hexes and lightning bolts and rock biters in here to catch up. Oh, that's big. Well, it does die to these two things, unless he can give a divine shield. The problem, of course, is that he then gets to pound me with these two recruits, so I drop to a precarious seven health. Oh, flame tongue, I love you so. So we're going to play the flame tongue. What's this? Kill that outright. I still have to kill off all of these damn recruits. But at least I can play Nightblade. The totem. You know, that charging thing would have been better. I could have killed off this recruit and had a taunter, which would make me a little bit safer. Polisher is not a problem. Seal of Light, also not a problem. I don't care if he kills my stuff, I just need him not to play more stuff. Finicky Cloakfield. Oh, he's gonna cloak up that Demolisher, so I might get hit for two damage to the face. Alright, that was a pretty good spare part for him. Jeepers Creepers. Taunt Totem, one in three chance. Oh yeah! Let's just play this and this. We'll trade off 
A one one. Hit him in his face. And hopefully, hopefully the demolisher really won't hit my head. Alright, hits the big dumb beast. That's just fine. He's down quite a few cards with that taunt totem. It's difficult for him to muster up enough damage to kill me. I'm not going to have problems with fatigue. Consecration. Pretty solid. Deals some damage to me. Kills off my stuff. My taunt totem is the most important thing that died. Oh, he has to hit my face. He's making a mistake if he doesn't hit my face. Oh, he... I mean, he was set to lose, but his best chance of winning would have been to hit my face and just hope that he can actually um, race me out. Oh, let's see here. We got 4, 8, 10, 15 damage. Not enough to kill. So I'm going to do this and draw a card. Pretty glad I did that. The Moyotron is a nice addition to the... Please God, Boris, don't get murdered, fun. Did I say murdered? I meant murdered. All right, well, um, looks like we got the kill next turn. Four, eight, 11, yep. So he needs an answer. Auctioneer, wasn't bad. I do have a lot of one mana spells in the deck, but I didn't really draw them. Aha, he gets another turn. So now he's actually gonna have a four card hand and enough health to survive so that was an interesting turn of events still with a Noyotron here it's difficult to, to kill me in one go but I think that that does buy him another turn and there might be something I'm overlooking I mean clearly there are things he could do here Deathwing would probably win in the game if he has a silence then he needs two cards with eight mana out of four to deal seven damage consecration Pops the shield on the Tron, kills off a bunch of my stuff. Still, I'm threatening lethal, but now if he can do away with the Tron and deal five damage, it's possible that he could win. It'd be tricky, because True Silver doesn't quite kill me, so like Owl plus True Silver won't do it. Another heal. Oh man, so he's actually surviving now with one point of health. Oh no, more than one. He's healed himself. Wow, what was it? 8, 11, plus 6. He's healed himself for 17. Wow. Alright, well, he's hanging in here. I think killing that thing with the ogre would have been a mistake. Because I think I need to keep that ogre's health as high as possible so it doesn't get burned down with like, um,. Double Consecration or like a Hammer of Wrath or something. Hammer of Wrath actually would be kind of a problem because that would take me down to two health. All right, it's getting, oh geez. Oh, well, if he gets that dream card that's deal five damage to everything but Ysera, he wins. I could, of course, top deck the kill right here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh my God. It's a good thing I found the win because if I had like just casually hexed Ysera, then he, there's a one in five chance he would have just killed me. I don't think that Paladin played very well, but it is a testament maybe to how strong his deck was that he almost beat me, even with really bad play. I think his deck was way better than mine. Yeah, I know, I'm just tooting my own horn, but my deck has a lot of removal, but his deck had Ysera and at least a True Silver, two Consecrations, and a Hammer, and a Blessing of Kings. I mean, there's really nothing he was lacking for. I never saw him play a single bad card. So yeah, I think he had a slightly better deck with a slightly better draw, and he misplayed it and lost. That's my analysis. Yes, it's very self-serving, I know, I know. But you know, you can't make videos without being a little confident. So that's my excuse for being a cocky jackass. Here we go! Ooh, what is, what is this? Oh, mage, Anglebot. Is it Anglebot? No, it's Angelbot. Begging your pardons, Angelbot is with us. I'm pretty happy with this hand, so we got our Tron on turn two, and then Power Mace or the Unbend Elemental on turn three, depending on whether she played anything that needs to be killed. I could also coin a Rock Biter at some point. Tron will get buffed when the Power Mace dies, although it's a little bit unlikely to survive that long. Okay, so there's a lot of ways you could do this play right here. You could coin into... Tron and Rockbiter. You could coin into Power Mace. 
I think that's what I'm gonna do. So the thinking here is, next turn I play the Tron, hit whatever she plays with the Power Mace. We're using a Rock Biter if necessary to finish the job, and then the Tron becomes a 3-4 with Divine Shield and Taunt, kind of like it, as if it was, um, as if it were beefed by a Hobgoblin. All right, what does she have? Mirror image here? No, she just has that straight. Well, that's about the ideal scenario. So we play the Tron, and buff it up. Now you might say, Boris, maybe that was a mistake. Why didn't you play the Unbound Elemental? Well, the thing is, the Unbound Elemental does cost more mana, but the Tron is a 3-4 versus this being a 2-4. So I feel like that was a pretty fair play. Wow, she had nothing on turn four. That's unlucky for her. So I could play the Big Dumb Beast or Totem and, and Flame Tongue. Hmm. If I go for Totem Flame Tongue, then I have more total like power on the board. I don't know. Normally, I'd say don't make a hero ability in lieu of playing creatures, but here that seemed to make sense. So we hit her for two extra damage. We put that totem, which just sucks that it was the one one because it's gonna get pinged. But if she pings it, she's not playing a five drop. She didn't have a four drop, so so um, she might not want to do that. No, she does in fact have no five drops that she wants to play. Interesting. To do. Well, that's kind of awkward, because I can play the Big Dumb Beast or the Unele Elemental, but I can't play both. I can't play two of anything unless I play the Rock Biter. And she doesn't give me anything to... Mm, I don't really understand what she's doing. So I could do Totem and the Shattered Sun Cleric, or Totem and the Unbound. Or I could just play the... You know, I'm just going to play the Big Dumb Beast. Here's my thinking. This thing, I want to have it on the table, because we're coming up to Flame Strike territory. That's pretty much the only way she can win this game anymore. So having something on the table that survives flame strike seems worth it. She really gonna use a polymorph for fireball on that? She actually is. Wow. Well, I don't mind that at all. That is great. All right. So here, I think the move is very clear. I need to make a totem and buff up my annoyatron. The reason I'm buffing the tron is so that if she flame strikes, the tron survives. And then I can, can I kill her? C6. Yeah, this is what's gonna happen, right? Oh, I'm gonna give myself some credit for a damn fine play. So we got, no, not six, four, plus five is nine. Plus three is 12, and that's all I got. Hmm, okay. Well, let's play the Cult Master and the Spider. So my thinking here is she can ping this, but that'll give me a card. If she kills this, then this stuff's threatening to kill her with the burst and the, and the biter. Oh, that's the one thing she could have had, though, is a second flame strike. Should have figured she was playing so slowly, she might have multiple flame strikes. Okay, okay, so let's repopulate. Hopefully she doesn't have three flame strikes. These two cards um, almost kill her. With the spell damage totem, she's down to one health. This does not get affected by spell damage. So I just need to get two damage through, and I'm good. I got a silence to get past taunts. Oh, that's perfect. And a fireball on the unbound. Pretty desperate. Joke, this is perfect. So we silence the sludge. Get the last two damage that we need. Lava burst. And rock biter for the kill. Pink. That was very nice of her to say well played. I think if I were in her shoes, I would have been really annoyed by that game. But. She had a slow start and two flame strikes just weren't enough to win it. Hey, I'm a three win. Scott, I really wish I had a daily quest for Shaman instead of Rogue. Yeah, well, we'll have to work, work at it to finish up the gold I need. So here we go. One more time for one more game in this video. It was a shitty start, but a happy ending. We shouldn't call this a happy ending because that has pretty dirty connotations. Man, English is so messed up that it's just a totally innocent phrase like happy ending means something dirty now. Here's our third Paladin of the day. Kabam! Stormforged Axe is great against Paladins because even if all you do with it is kill off three recruits, it's still worth it. And I mulligan the Flame Tongue, obviously, so I can get another Flame Tongue. Thing is, I didn't want to keep Flame Tongue if I was already playing the Stormforged Axe. I would have nothing to buff with the tongue. Buff with the tongue. Hey, baby, can I buff you with my tongue? <laughs> Alright, so, um, pretty shitty opening hand, actually. Really nothing to do here. Do you play this axe? 
No, I'm gonna make a totem. The reason is I would actually rather be able to flame tongue and attack something with the totem than just have a preemptive weapon in the hand. Well, hopefully this thing doesn't have more than three health. It has four health. Okay, great. Uh, well, if only that had been the 1-1 one, one totem, I could have actually killed it with Power Mace. What I'll do here is I'll take advantage of this cleric I just got and actually throw into it. I know normally I'm not, I say I'm not a fan of doing that before the time happens, but here I want to make sure I'm threatening the kill to go up a card. Is he gonna do it for me? That would be nice. Take away all the suspense. Man, that power mace really living to regret it. Oh, the Scarlet Purifier would have actually killed his own thing. I see. Well, this sucks because I can't kill this. Oh, wait, what am I talking about? I can't kill it. I can kill it. So when I said I can't kill it, what I meant was I have two cards to kill it. Okay, there we go. Hopefully I can get a mech. If not, the Spiteful Smith's a good play, but I really wish that one of these were the Azure Drake. Clearly, I overdrafted those power bases. Alright, I don't, I don't find a mech, unfortunately, but this is fine. And you might say, well, Boris, why are you killing that recruit? You're wasting the death rattle on that power mace. You know, the power mace could have killed something better. Thing is, I just don't want to leave a paladin with a creature. Because I'm sick of losing games, because paladins had some creatures. Alright, so do we play the ogre here and let this thing live? Nah, let's just play flame tongue. Kill this. Go for a stalker over here and a totem over here. All right, consecration doesn't hit me too bad. The stalker and the flame tongue both live. He's got seven cards to my nine. I got a cult master, which could be the bomb Dickens here. So this is looking good. Cult master could pretty much be backbreaking here if he doesn't kill enough of my stuff. Rifleman! Who would have frickin' thought? Well, that's all he's got, though, for that turn. Okay, so I got a couple different options here. I could play the Stormforge Dax and just kill this the old-fashioned way, or I could play the Cult Master, trade in, get a card, kill the Recruit. Uh, then I'm just really wasting a lot of my potential if I do that. So what I really want to do is kill this, the Totem, kill that, and I'm gonna play an Ogre. Forget the Call Master here, I'm just gonna kill him by playing Amazing Creatures. Well, it's not as if he had a big game Hunter, because that means the Flame Tongue will let him kill my Ogre. Oh my god. <sighs> that was scary. So, no big game Hunter, he's just gonna get a card every time I attack with that. That's fine, he's gonna kill my Flame Tongue, that's also fine. Now, I just gotta decide what to do. Reporting for duty. Hmm... Auctioneer doesn't work. I don't have any spells. I think now's the time to play this. Kill that. Hit him here and do that. I don't think dealing six damage is worth giving him a card, so I'll pass. But I'm totally prepared to attack with that ogre. There's also a chance I'll find a spell breaker and silence up that ogre. Then I could attack with him again. Takes two more damage. Cult Master's not so good anymore. I definitely missed the window with that. And he plays a Force Tank Max. Hmm. Well, I don't even quite kill it with the Ogre is the annoying thing. Unless, of course, he was Flame Tongue. So I should actually probably use a Flame Tongue. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's play this. Card number one. Give him a card, but give myself a card as well. Card number two. Draw the Hex. That would have been a way better way of killing a Force Tank Max. Awesome. Well, it's still kind of a game, but I've got all these six drops. A oh, really great weapon. The Power Mace could end up actually buffing the Golem, though I don't really want to count on that. That's a bit far-fetched. I can kill off his recruits with the Stormforged Axe. I have enough health to do that. Oh my, does he not have a way of killing off my Cult Master? It is not. The spell damage is totally worthless. Fantastic. Okay. So how do we do this? Um, I could run this and that into the ogre. The 
cult master can kill that. But that seems pretty dumb. I can use the axe to kill that, and the cult master can kill that. And then I can just trade that for a card, just for laughs. Okay, so we'll do this. This seems like a fair move. Okay. Kill that. Cult Master's done its job, I think. Play the ogre and a big dumb beast. Health totals high enough. I'm not worried about dying. I got a ton of power on the board, even without the flame tongue. Seven health per creature. Hard for Paladins to deal with. I have another great drop along the way. Got another weapon. Got a hex to kill off anything you could play. Blessing of Kings. Alright, seen a lot of that lately. Reporting for duty. The recruit will die to my weapon. Oh, he can actually kill off my big dumb beast. I see. He kills the flame tongue. An interesting choice. I think that was a mistake. Yeah, well, let's just do what we gotta do. So we hex that. Kill that. Kill that. He really should have killed this thing. Or the or the ogre, for that matter, while he had the chance. I'm amazed he didn't do that. And then I'm gonna play the mech, which makes the golem cheaper. So I can sneak that on there. You know, it would have been a different game if he had just killed off one of my things. And I wouldn't have been able to kill off his defender. I could have still hexed it, but then I would have had to... Yeah, I would, I would have had a lot less board presence if he had just killed all my creatures with that 7-7. Seven, seven. It's those little windows that make the biggest difference sometimes. He heals up, but I don't really care. Okay. It's looking pretty good. So, can I kill him? 12, 14, 17. No, I can't kill him. But, you know, no need to do anything fancy. Let's just play out all my crap that I have. Kill this. Kill that. Kill this. Kill that. And hit him in the face. Healing Totem is a good flip because it stops this from dying to Consecration. Ogre does die to Consecration, but it and the Totem are the only thing. So I'm not concerned. There's actually three mechs on the table, so I don't know what's going to get buffed by the Power Mace. He could still come back and win with an Equality Consecrate, but I will have a random 4-drop, and I do have some spells in the deck that I can combo with the Auctioneer. <laughs> Holy Wrath! Alright! It deals exactly 4. I get a 5-5, five, five, which with a drawback. This is the thing that, you know, returns a friendly minion to your hand when it dies. And he concedes. Alright, cool. I guess I was going to kill him. So, we got up to 47 minutes, we got up to 4 wins, a terrible start, best of times, worst of times sort of a thing, like a Dickens novel. That'll do it for this video, thank you so much for watching everybody, hope you enjoyed it, please like and or subscribe and I'll see you again soon, take care.